Welcome to yet another exciting edition of Get It Right. As always, the main objective of this show is to showcase to farmers the correct procedures they need to follow for them to succeed in their various farming ventures. In today's show, we speak with Paul Nyongesa Kisiangani, a mushroom farmer, also the CEO of Agribusiness Youth Society of Kenya that is based in Kakamega County. This is a business that I've been doing since 2005 and I was motivated to start doing this business because I did not have employment at that time or rather there was employment but it was not remunerative in the sense that I was not getting the satisfaction in terms of what I was being paid and in terms of my and the engagement in terms of my application of the knowledge that I acquired uh, while studying at the university. I've been able to do this business because one of the advantages is that it, require, it requires very little of external input. It is a, a low-cost investment uh, activity that is appropriate particularly for youth because I began it as a youth and for women who do not have access to financial resources to invest in businesses. Paul has mainly specialized in the production of oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms are possibly the easiest variety of mushrooms to grow. They are super quick, relatively resistant to competitor organisms and they can grow on a wide range of substrate materials. They have a fan-shaped cap that is smooth with no warts or scales. They are usually white to light brown in color with a firm white flesh. Their gills are also white and attached running down the cap and stem. Mushrooms require very little space. They actually don't require arable land for you to produce mushrooms. You only need to get space where you can put up a structure for mushroom production. The other thing is that mushrooms do not require um, you to wait for such a long time like other crops. As we know, climate change has come and we also need to change to crops and investments that are able to save us in terms of producing a crop, assuring us of a harvest. So since mushrooms are cultivated in a controlled environment in a house, we can be able to produce uh, them throughout the year. And for instance, the oyster mushrooms only takes one month and then you start harvesting. You'll harvest for three months. After that, you will prepare another crop, which means you'll have a one month pro break and then you do another crop. So in a year, you can do three crops. And mushrooms is a high value cash crop. It's um, when I compare it to sugarcane, a farmer is paid 3000 shillings per a ton of sugarcane harvested. Whereas mushrooms farmer earns 400 shillings per kilogram. So for me, harvesting an average of 10 kilograms of mushrooms every day uh, gives me about 4,000 Kenya shillings per day. And when I calculate this in a month, I'm having well above 100,000 shillings a month. Comparing that to a sugarcane farmer, you'll find this sugarcane farmer has produced, say, 40 tons or 60 tons in an acre over a period of 24 months. This farmer is making 120,000 shillings in two years. This is the kind of money a mushroom farmer makes just in one month. So this is an investment opportunity that is good for youth, it's good for uh, women, it's good for anybody that has no employment. Kenya produces 500 tons of mushrooms per year against an annual demand of 1,200 tons from hotels and home consumption. The mushroom crop breeds by utilizing nutrients from the substrate through colonizing the substrate that forms pinheads which develop into fruit bodies which are now the mushrooms. The best substrates for oyster mushrooms include wheat straw, banana leaves, cotton seeds cuttings and rice straw. Unlike others, 
banana leaves and cotton seed extracts may not require supplementations. The main supplements used in the production of the substrates used for growing the oyster mushroom are wheat bran and rice bran. A good substrate should have a CN ratio of 2 to 5. If you have, say, three bags of sugarcane burgers, then you will add one bag of wood shavings or sawdust, then add one, two cups of molasses to 20 liters of water. You will also add two cups of lime to the 20 liters of water so that you make a solution that will be used to, to water or to wet the material to the correct moisture content. The byproducts for composting the substrate for mushroom production is ammonia and heat. So the longer the substrate stays, the higher the temperatures rise. We add the molasses. Yeah, molasses is a byproduct of uh, sugar making process in the sugar factory. After the sugar has been at the process of crystallization and the molasses has a high content of, uh, of sugar. It's also used as a livestock feed uh, on farms. So you can see, after we've added the molasses, we come and add the lime. Lime is, uh, is a product of mining and mainly in areas where they are doing mining of um, limestone, which is used for making cement. So it is a byproduct of the manufacture of cement in, uh, in, uh, in the mining industry. Mainly it can be found in agrovets and uh, hardwares. So once this has been mixed, what we do is we pour the water into a watering can Then we, we wet the mixture that we have made. After waiting, we do mixing. Just to make sure that the moisture, moisture has been distributed uh, evenly in the material. For oyster mushroom production, we do not do composting. It's just fresh material, like after this material is got from the factory, we come and do the mixing and we are able to make our substrate. We do not have to compost in the same way uh, we do composting for the button mushrooms or rather the agaricus species of mushrooms. Every 100 kilos of the substrate, we add five kilos of the wheat bran or the maize jam. And we spread it on the surface. After we spread it on the surface, we do mixing. The maize jam or wheat, wheat bran increases the protein content or the nitrogen content in this material because mushrooms also require uh, some level of nitrogen for them to grow in a very good way. Once mixing is done, the substrate is then packed into clear bags to enable the farmer monitor the day-to-day -day changes of the substrate as well as to detect diseases and infections easily. We can use polythene bags or we can even use uh, plastic waste beans, or we can use even this type of container, like buckets. We can pack it in the buckets or in the polythene bag, compressing tightly, or you compress it very hard. Every layer, as you do the addition, you make sure that you have compressed it well. 
we compress it well so that when we are sterilizing it or rather pasteurizing it we do not have vacuums that will prevent the flow of heat in the entire substrate so after we have compressed it nicely we tie it we get plastic rubber band to tie the mouth this is to prevent entry of moisture or exit of moisture from this material because now we want to maintain a specific quantity of moisture to prevent excess moisture when the moisture is excess it will result in molds or other types of non non other types of uh, organisms that are not mushrooms from growing inside here so this bag is ready for the process of sterilization which involves putting inside a drum with hot with water and being heated for one and a half hours then it will be removed from the drum then it cools and after cooling we do the inoculation of seed spawning is the actual process of planting the mushrooms the spawn is usually spread on the surface of the compost but it slightly penetrates on the surface after the bag has been sterilized the next stage is to let it cool and it will cool overnight after cooling overnight then we do the process of what you call spawning spawning is the application of mushroom seed to the substrate this is an activity that needs to be done on a clean surface now uh, we have spirit uh, methylated spirit or jig which can be used for cleaning sterilizing the area where you will do the the activity of spawning you also sterilize the hands then you also sterilize the the wire that will be used to loosen the seed and the seed surface the sterilization of the materials is important because it reduces the chances of contaminating the substrate that has already been sterilized so that you are sure that what you have planted the mushrooms you planted will definitely come out because the seed is quite delicate and is not able to compete against many other types of fungi Mushroom breeding requires the right type of seeds also known as spawns. Currently, there are four types of spawns carrier materials and they include grain spawn, sawdust spawn, plug spawn and liquid spawn. During planting, the spawns are usually placed on the sides of the substrate and close to the top and holes are poked in the bag. So you come and open the bag. After opening the bag, you get the mushroom seed the seed can be inspected and you when you find that it is completely white then that seed is good you can also do a smell test just to be sure that it is smelling mushrooms then you loosen the spoon using the wire you'll get approximately a tablespoon of the seed and you apply it on the surface of the bag after applying it on the surface you do some little roughly just to make sure that it gets mixed especially on the surface this is good because sometimes it prevents the visibility of the grains which are attractive to rats then you get your rubber band and tie the bag again so that to maintain a high 
concentration of carbon dioxide in the bag, which is essential for the mushroom to grow. Then you make a few holes on the bag. You puncture a few holes. This is just to allow some fresh air to flow into the bag and prevent the accumulation of excess carbon dioxide. After that is done, the mushroom planting process is complete. This is followed by taking it to the mushroom house, you put it on the shelf, and within one month, the seed will have covered the bag from the front up to the bottom, and at that stage, you can be able to expose it for uh, you can be able to open so that the mushrooms can start emerging. So this bag will be taken into the mushroom house. After planting is done, the bag containing the substrate and spawn content is then placed in a warm dark room to incubate and begin the first phase of growth. The spawns normally take between 10 to 14 days to grow a full web of root-like threads of mycelium and colonize the green substrate. We're taking a short break, but don't go too far as after the break, we'll be taking you through the management and care of the mushroom in the incubation room.